What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoose, you are awesome, and Netmarble Inside recently conducted an interview with the developers of Overprime, and there was a lot of really good information about the future of the game, console and crossplay, and how fast they plan to implement new heroes. Normally I would just tell you guys about this interview and let you read it for yourself, but it's obviously been translated so it can be a bit difficult to muddle through. I'll post a link to the interview anyway. I also have some opinions about some of what was revealed, so I'm going to run through some of the most interesting questions and answers and talk through my thoughts. I'll read the entire question, however, I'll paraphrase the answers. Just a quick reminder, Overprime is planning an 11-day closed beta test starting on April 29th, and all you have to do is sign up for it on Steam if you want to play. I'll do an official video on that in a few days. The first question I want to talk about is... There have been many games claiming to be Paragon's successor, but Overprime managed to draw the most attention. As an indie game development team, I heard that you hit the limit several times. We understand that Netmarble's help getting over that limitation was a big help. I already have some issues with this question. First of which, it, it wasn't a question, it was a statement anyway. Secondly, while I personally really enjoyed the last Overprime beta test, I think it's pretty bold to claim that Overprime has drawn the most attention out of all the Parazombies especially in the face of the resounding success that was predecessor's last stress test. Now, let, let's get to the answer, because the answer is actually kind of charming. So we'll leave answered by explaining the origin of their name. They had decided at one point that they would put their heart and soul into the game until Christmas Eve, and if things had not worked out by then, they would just call it quits. They were already funding things out of pocket, and they just couldn't keep on doing that. Netbarble reached out to them before that happened, and they've been able to uh, leverage that support to hire manpower and cover expenses. I'll paraphrase the next question because it's kinda all over the place. Overprime feels like a standard MOBA unlike some current MOBAs that have removed or remodeled elements in order to lower the barrier of entry. If Soleve plans to keep all of the variables in Overprime, then how do you plan to deal with players who think that MOBAs are too complicated and exhausting? So leave answer is that instead of simplifying mechanics for new players, they will instead focus on making it easier for players to attain the information they need, both in and out of the client, while also improving how players can communicate with their team. I like this answer because Overprime is already a simplified version of what Paragon was. I would, I would hate to see them dumb it down anymore. I like this approach of just giving players the tools they need to learn instead of removing the things they need to learn. In PvP games, veteran users' presence can also be an entry barrier for those newbies. Although Overprime itself is a brand new game, as a successor of Paragon, it is expected that there will be a skill gap between users who have played Paragon and those who have not. How do you plan to close the gap between such players? After launch, skill-based matchmaking will be implemented. Pre-launch, they plan to have tutorial videos, a community to exchange information, in-game skill range display, and voice chat. I'm all in for all of this, but especially voice chat. I know people will be toxic as fucking voice, but that's what the mute function is for. I'll gladly deal with having to occasionally hear some snide comments before I mute someone if it means that I have the ability to communicate effectively with my team. Big fan of the voice chat. I will say, however, that I don't think the skill disparity will be as big as they think. From my experience with playing the different tests, you have four categories of players. People that have never touched a MOBA. Then you have Paragon players that haven't touched a MOBA since Paragon. Paragon players that turn to a different MOBA and therefore they at least have an understanding of strategy. And then you have Fault players who have been playing that shit non-stop for the last two years that will rack up 42 kills while moonwalking past your core. But not a lot of people play Fault, so I don't see this as being a huge problem for Overprime. Is there any tip from the developer's point of view you want to give to new users who haven't experienced Paragon? Team Soliv said you should watch my videos to prepare yourselves. Well, they, they said to watch videos on YouTube or Twitch, but I took that as them specifically referring to me. And here's, here's, the, big, here's the big question. Releasing the game on various platforms is a way of attracting many players. The game is set to be released on PC as well as consoles, and I wonder if there are any plans to support crossplay. Yes, Overprime will release on consoles, but they do not have plans to include crossplay between console and PC users. They believe that it wouldn't be fair to match keyboard and mouse users against controller users. I would like to officially call bullshit. I truly hope they reconsider this stance. Maybe have a rank mode with no crossplay or something, but 
Being crossplay is part of what made Paragon special. I've always played on PC, but I met so many friends that played Paragon on PS4 that I still game with to this day. And yes, at very high levels of play, aiming with a mouse is objectively better, but shit man, I'm, I'm sure some of you guys can out-aim me using a controller. I, I really don't think it would be a big problem unless we're talking like really high level ranked play or competitive play. Reports say about 57,000 people participated in the first closed beta test. The proportions are 64% in Asia, 14% in Europe, and 18% in America. What did people think of the game? Soli's response was that before the stress test, 98% of their community was based in Europe and North America. There was an influx of Asian players where marketing proved successful. They also know that they need to implement more language support, and they learned a lot about the direction they need to go from the closed beta test. Jellynese has been saying on For the Minions for months now that Overprime's advertising and overall aesthetic is geared towards the Eastern market, and it looks like Homeboy was right. What I find truly exciting though, is that if these percentages are correct, a vast majority of Asian players didn't know about Overprime before. If any of these games are going to be successful, they need to be able to generate and sustain their own player base and not rely on us poor para-refugees. Soul Eve has now proven that they can attract new players, let's hope they can keep them. What is the most memorable feedback you feel must be addressed most urgently from the last CBT? And what are some internal problems you must resolve before advancing further? Soli's priorities after the stress test are server stability, optimization, and a pleasant environment. When they say pleasant environment, they're talking about shutting down levers, hackers, and toxic assholes. They're already implementing plans to address it. After that, they want to focus on quality of life improvements, new player onboarding, matchmaking errors, UI, and tutorials. I didn't have problems with servers or optimization with Overprime. I certainly didn't run into any hackers, or at least I don't think so. If they were hacking, they, they still kind of sucked. Uh, good to know they're making plans to deal with draft dodgers and shit, although the, the queue times were so fast, I wasn't it wasn't that much of a problem for me personally. A pool of interesting characters is crucial in maintaining the success of a character-based multiplayer fighting game. Overprime inherits the characters from Paragon, but looking over the characters that have been introduced, we can see many characters never seen before in Paragon. We are curious about your plan on implementing Paragon characters to Overprime. In addition to that, we wonder what your views on adding original characters are. They plan to add all of the old Paragon heroes back into the game with some tweaks to the kits. OG heroes will come out once a month, and brand new Overprime originals will be released every three months. They're only using a few heroes for the closed beta test to make balance easier, and they also just use their most well-developed heroes. I knew that they had more heroes that they could release if they wanted to. Overprime way back before they got bought up by Netmarble had all kinds of heroes that we don't see in the current iteration. Like they had Sarath and Decker and I know Boris and I think Greystone. They had a whole bunch of them. I think once a month is a good release schedule for Paragon Heroes and having something brand new every three months will be, that'll be pretty cool as well. All the Parazombies will eventually have to branch out from the free assets and start making their own shit. Good to know that Soul Eve is already doing that. We can't look over the free-to-play aspect of the game. You mentioned that paid products would mainly be skins and emotes. Could you tell us the details of that? I'm going to read the word-for-word -word answer here. All paid products will be cosmetic elements only and never affect your stats or skill. We don't aim to be number one in sales, and we want to see the users have fun. That's the most Disneyland-ass answer I've ever heard, but I truly hope they stick with this philosophy. Lastly, is there anything you would like to say to players waiting for the game? I'll read this one word for word as well, no, no more paraphrasing. As mentioned earlier, we were players and fans of Paragon, just like many of the fans waiting to play Overprime. We aim to make a game that many users can enjoy, rather than a first place sales game. We hope that you agree with our vision. We will try our best to meet your expectations for the rest of the development period. There was a lot to learn in this little interview. Soul Eve has been very transparent so far with their community corners, but this covered many questions I've had for a while. Most of this was welcome news, however I really hope they reconsider their stance on crossplay. Let me know how you felt about some of these revelations in the comments below. I track all the Paragon Resurrection projects on my channel, so please subscribe if you want more updates. Like the video if you enjoyed it, but for now, this is the Mangoo signing off. You guys, have a good one. Mangoo!
Special shout out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees Meow, Mix for Men, Stunt, Ferenth, and Raven.